Hello, Internets. Jesus loves you. My name is Cody, and this is the Christian News Show we do every Tuesday. And we're just going to hit heavy with our first story of the day. I wasn't here last week, so you may have already heard this, but Trump has declared Jerusalem as Israel's capital. And I'd like to start this conversation by just stating that I am way more ignorant on this topic than I'd like to be. And so, as always, I'm going to leave a link to everything down in the description, but I feel like this specifically uh, is probably said better in the article than coming from me. Palestinians and Israelites have been fighting over Jerusalem for centuries. And that's because both claim that the city has historical and religious significance to their people. Now, it's easy enough to ask, why can't everyone just get along? But you have two groups of people that are fighting over whose capital it really is. They're fighting literally over whose city it is. And then you have Palestinians saying that Israelites are tearing apart their history and Israelites saying vice versa. It also doesn't help that both groups of people are saying that the other has zero ties to the city whatsoever, uh, instead of saying maybe we both do. And so that's completely oversimplifying the situation, but hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of what's going on here. And so that's why it's an incredibly bold move for President Trump to say, no, this is the capital of Israel. Something that many presidents before him have opted not to do. And because of the United States, it's a much bigger deal because we are such a powerhouse in the world. The next step in legitimizing the United States official stance is going to be to move the U.S. Embassy there. This could take three to four years, but it's already kind of moving in that direction. It's been debated by tons of professionals, much smarter than I, uh, whether or not this will actually bring peace to Jerusalem in the long run. But as of right now, it's already started tons of riots and violent ones at that. I know a lot of Jewish people and Christians are very excited about this move. Uh, me personally, I don't know if religiously I really care. Jerusalem has a ton of significance in the Bible, but it just seems kind of materialistic to be fighting over a location. That said, as a human who likes history, uh, I don't care if it's Muslim history or Christian history, I want it preserved. If it's historical, stop destroying it, please. But again, my opinion is probably less informed than it should be. Moving on to our next story of the day brings us back to the United States, specifically talking about social media. There's an organization called the National Religious Broadcasters, and they are fighting against the censorship you see on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google, everything else. You've probably already heard of the adpocalypse here on YouTube. If you haven't, basically a lot of videos have been taken down because they are not ad friendly. And the point of it is to give advertisers some peace of mind so that their ads aren't showing on videos they don't agree with. So for example, later in this video, I'll be talking about ISIS. More than likely, this video will not be monetized. And I'm not going to act like it's not real because a ton of conservative issues are being hit with this. And it's not just YouTube. Facebook and Twitter have been shown to do this, especially if somebody is very far right. Uh, a lot of times those pages will actually get shut down. And so the NRB is taking this to Congress saying that it is unfair for these social media platforms to be doing this. A lot of people get their news from social media, and so if that social media is biased, then more than likely you're going to be affecting the opinions of the American people. And I totally understand why they're fighting this. I hate being censored. I also don't know if it's the government's decision. Even though these social media platforms are huge, they are owned by companies, and those companies are owned by people. I really don't see much of a difference with the government telling a giant social media network, hey, don't censor these things for your viewpoints. Uh, any different than if the government were to come up to me and say, hey, your videos, you talk about your opinions on there, you can't do that. You need to be unbiased. I understand that they reach a lot more people than I do, but it's still their company. And so I think that there should be much less of going to the government about this and more going to the companies directly. And as I said, the final story of the day is about ISIS, but uh, for once in a long time, it is good news. The Iraqi government is now saying that ISIS has zero control over any territory in Iraq. I do want to acknowledge that that definitely didn't come free. There was a lot of pain and hurt involved in that happening. But it probably was only two years ago that I was talking about experts stating that they believed that Christianity would be completely wiped from Iraq because of ISIS. 24 months ago, the idea of hope was very bleak in those stories. Now, although ISIS is out of Iraq, there are still ISIS members in Syria. But after talking about ISIS for the last like three years, it's really good to be able to report that. Christianity was almost completely extinct in that state. And now it has a chance to grow again. Question of the day, I, I feel like I probably should ask this. You probably know more than I do, some of you. Uh, what are your thoughts on President Trump saying that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel? Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Uh, give me your comments down in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. As always, my name is Cody, bringing you Christian news in a not so boring kind of way every Tuesday. We'll see you next week. Love you. God bless.